Prime 105.5 FM Amazing Endless Possibilities One oh five point five Prime FM. Keep the dial fixed. Don't tune off. Lock one oh five point five on your FM dial. Keep rolling with your tasty dial. The home of exceptional programming, great music, quality discourse, fresh and authentic news and information with awesome and talented presenters. Prime 105.5 FM, your tasty radio. Okay, this is it, the, the Prime Morning Drive on Prime 105.5 FM, Bemi Live from the heart of the Laburnian capital city of Monrovia. Uh, we are located at uh, the top of Snapo here on Benson Street. My name is Mamadi. We're about to start our special presentation of the Prime Morning Drive today. We are extremely privileged to have with us the President of the Republic of Liberia as our prime guest to talk about a range of national issues. This is intended to uh, that practice the culture of true democracy where and uh, the head of state interact with the people we give you the opportunity to ask questions foster our democratic culture and above all enhance the peace that we all are enjoying today so we are extremely delighted that the president accepted our invitation a rare opportunity and uh, to have us with us this morning this program going to be carried live and, uh, on several stations State ELBC, Fabric FM 101.1 FM, Radio Veritas, the Red Power FM, or my radio. Expect hopefully, we've not confirmed, but I hope they do that. And hosts of community radio stations across the country, OK FM is already on, and they are carrying this presentation live. So no time to waste. There's going to be an hour of uh, interaction with uh, the President of the Republic of Liberia, Madam President. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Prime Money Drive. Thank you, Mama D. Glad to see you back. How do you feel this morning being here? I feel great. Always lively. Always lively. <laughs> Always ready. I know. To carry on the work of the Liberian people. And we are we are delighted for the opportunity and thank you for the leadership. Thank you for and all we've done for our country, regardless of the challenge here, we as a people continue to confront. But it's a good thing to have you as a a president of a resilient people, like you always fondly said. Thank you very much. My president, I'm going to structure this interaction through three main lenses. Uh, we're going to talk about politics. And of course, I want your appreciation of uh, the real state of the economy. And now uh, we move on to talk about the state of security. And I'll also be interested to get your, you know, to attract your understanding about what it is to be a president of a, a country coming from war, a political country like ours, and the stress and strain you have to undergo every day to govern and lead. Again, let me say thank you. Thank you very much for coming. And I, I'm going to start with the, with the first question. Madam President, what actually it means to be president of uh, the Republic of Liberia? What does it bring? Uh, what do you feel? Well, Mamadi, it means tremendous responsibility, mm -hmm. particularly when one is rebuilding a country virtually from scratch, you know, 
rebuilding all the sectors that require development. It means making hard decisions, sometimes decisions that may affect the lives of people, positively as well as negatively. It means um, making compromises and exercising tolerance, patience and understanding in the interest of peace. So, it's a tough job being president anywhere in the world. I think it's a little bit tougher being president in Liberia. Yes, the point I read, it, making compromises, you mean? That is something that uh, is a very hard decision. Though. Yes, it is, but you, you must do it. Uh, hmm. Sometimes when you, when you have to let go, sometimes when you have to, uh, you have to take a bit of pill because to do otherwise mean you, you create tensions, hmm. you, you create problems, and you invite disconnects in the society. So I think compromise is, is, is part of a, a, a situation that every leader has to face. Relatively, you've come a long way. This is uh, we're in the middle of your second term. If you have the opportunity, what do you really want to or you would like to do the order will change in the Liberian presidency? What about you? you when you look by, you say, I hope this were not part of it. Well, you know, let me say I'm very pleased mm -hmm. with, uh, with what I've done. You know, I, I set forth to reinstate democracy with all its tenets, and I think I've succeeded a lot in that regard. I, I set up to re-energize the economy, and mm -hmm. I'd like to say I've done a lot of that too. Uh, I set up to restore the reputation, the credibility of our country hmm. internationally. I've done that too. Um, that doesn't say that there's not more to be done. There's much, much more to be done, of course. But we're very pleased with that which we have accomplished. So, what would I change? I think I agree with the people of this country that the presidency should be for four years. And I wish the legislature would act on that. Four years, two terms, enough for any president. <laughs> <laughs> okay, work. Uh, Madam President, I have to ask this question. Sometimes, you know, it's a little bit difficult to ask, but since I have the opportunity and as uh, democratic as you are, I think you will not restrict my ability to get the facts out. And this has to do with, uh, and you've called many persons to help you to work. And the first term, the second term. But at some point they resign, they go into private light, but uh, they, they always come back criticizing you. And I ask, is it that uh, you've not been able to manage your relationship with them? Why? Most of the guys are resigned. For example, the Minister of uh, Justice and other people, when they leave, they tend to look back and say all sort of hard things. And how do you manage with those criticism? First of all, I don't think there are many of them. Yes, there are some. Mm -hmm. um, criticism is a... Uh, it's part of the, the democratic process and you've got to be able to, to take the criticism. Uh, sometimes I wish those who work with me and have criticism would criticize while they're inside. Don't wait until they get outside to criticize. <laughs> They'll be at the detriment of their job I, I, when they criticize. I do listen to people when they criticize. In any case, like I say, that's it. The, the only thing that really bothers me about that if uh, if the criticism uh, is is with falsehood, if people are not telling the truth, you know, if they're libelous accusations, um, those are the things that I think one gets annoyed at. But criticism per se, that's part of uh, what a leadership has to take. That's part of life. As long as people engage in exchanges, uh, when exchanges. Uh, exhibit differences, criticize. That's it. I have learned to develop a thick skin on this one. So, There should be really a thick skin because if you read the media, you, uh, most of these things coming up, uh, when you go home at night, you know, after reading the headlines, listening to the radio, uh, the criticism very, very big. How do you, what, what was the immediate reaction? What comes to your mind? <laughs> you know, Mama D, I've learned to, to brush those things off. I 
can't say I'm immune to anger. I, I, I can get angry too. I have to be a human. Mm -hmm. uh, and one or two times I will get angry. Um, but by and large, I, I accept it. I, like I say, my main concern is when people tell lies. And you have a lot of that in this society. I, I wish people would just take time when there's an issue, in the media for example, and somebody carries a story, just take the time to check it out, take the time to ask, to get the truth, and then, you know, put your criticism if it's justified by the facts and the information that you've obtained. Um, so, but you know, we've learned to accept it, learned to live with it, and learned to move on and carry out our responsibility. Has it any way damaged or hampered your your vigor to govern in a way? No, it hasn't. What it what it really has undermined, perhaps, is um, is the country and the country's ability to attract the support, the investment, which is so much needed for us to consolidate the progress we've made. I mean, if people keep hearing criticism, not only of me but of each other, you know, it's not just me that criticize. They criticize everybody else. They criticize the country. Uh, and like I say, if it's not justified, it, people don't have a means who are, who are outside to judge the veracity, you know, of those statements. <laughs> and in that particular case, it could harm the country, the reputation, the credibility of the country. And that when it really bothers me because I would hate to see anything undermine all the effort we have made to promote peace, to promote democracy, to promote development. Let's go for let's talk about security. Omid is drawing down this uh, 2016, and uh, there are concerns about whether our security forces are prepared. And let me ask: the, Are they adequately prepared to fill the gap that will be created by the absence of uh, Omid? Our security forces are prepared in the process of being adequately pre prepared. If I may use your phrase. Mm -hmm. Training is going on, uh, many of them, many of the units, the agencies are professionally trained, are getting more trained, we're getting the support in that, and they have a determination to take on the responsibility for the protection and the security of the state. And we ought to give them the benefit of the doubt. I think they're getting ready, I think they will be ready, and I think they will carry out their responsibility to protect this nation and its people. You say adequately getting prepared. Uh, how long are you going to take us to read adequately? No. Training of anything and anybody hmm. is a continuing process. Okay. There's, there's never the limit to learning and the limit to improving. And so they will continue to improve until Unmill goes. They'll be ready to stand and take up. As Unmill stands down, they'll be ready to take over. But at the same time, they will continue their training and continue getting better, better capacitated, you know, better incentivized. And so, like I say, I feel confident. You know, there comes a time when a nation must assume its responsibility for its own protection. That's part of sovereignty. Liberia's time has come. Yeah. And our forces will be ready. All right, my brother, in your last address, November 19, you, you stress your vigor to fight riches list to kill. In fact, you say we're coming for you. But there is one angle that remains a little bit concerned. It has to do with uh, the fact that we don't have qualified, competent pathologists on the ground to help the police. And uh, one of my Facebook asked me to talk about what are you doing in that, in that regard? Well, you're absolutely right. That has been a constraint hmm. on us concluding investigations in uh, matters relating to, uh, to ritualistic killings and other types of, um, of victimization. Um, fortunately, uh, the Ministry of Health hmm. is now carrying out a recruitment process for a pathologist. Someone we hope will be a Liberian, but maybe not a Liberian, but a pathologist that can be recruited hmm. and contracted for at least a year. At the same time, we now have four Liberians in Ghana studying pathologists. And so they're being supported by the Ministry of Justice because the Ministry of Justice knows that this particular function is so necessary to the completion of the investigation. So while we've had a constraint, I feel very good now that we have a process that will correct this. 
Let that goes to the economy because we have to go on the line so that you can interact with, with the people. In your last address, you, you, you call the brand to face stark reality. And I, I interpret that, that to get ready for hard times because our two best economy commodities, iron ore and rubber, are not faring well on the international market. What are you putting in place to get us prepared to face those very difficult times you talk about? Look, the the economy is in stress, but the sky is not falling. Uh, countries have been in stress before, economies have been in stress, and you take measures uh, to be able to mitigate uh, the stress. Yes, we have difficult times because, you know, in, in 2007, Liberia grew at the rate of 12.7%. Uh, Liberia was one of the fastest growing economies uh, in, in West Africa, even in Africa. Of course, by the time we, we reached um, 2008, was the time of the global financial crisis, mm -hmm. you may recall. And so that 12 and seven dipped mm -hmm. to 6%. Mm -hmm. And we started the process of rebuilding. By the time we reached 2013, uh, we had climbed back up to 8.7%. Oh, then, of course, in that year, the prices of iron ore and rubber, our two major exports, declined very sharply. And that was followed in 14 by Ebola. And so the whole, the whole GDP plummeted uh, to 0.7%. And what does that uh, mean? Well, what that means is that it will affect revenue. When we started the 15-16 budget year, our hmm. revenue was $622 million. Um, by the time we hit 13, 14, because of these uh, externalities, mm -hmm. uh, we had to reduce to 548. Mm -hmm. um, just a few days ago, the Minister of Finance came and told me, look, we have, um, uh, on, we have balance appropriation, budgetary appropriation of 340 something million, and I may have to cut still. Uh, some 60 something million to make sure that we maintain economic uh, stability um, and, and so we're looking at those proposals to see what we can do but at the same time we're looking at other measures that we will take to try to overcome there is a nascent growing small business sector particularly Liberian entrepreneurs that we're going to have means to support to see if they can do there's an untapped fishing potential mm -hmm. that we're looking at to see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Agriculture generally has the possibility to do things. And once we can get some of our infrastructure like power going so we can have value addition, the potential to diversify the economy into areas away from the extractive industries to agriculture and to other things are what we're looking at. I'll be, I'll be announcing some economic stimuli measures when I speak, when I give the annual message to the legislature at the end of the month. And uh, we see what we can do to make sure that we keep the economy on even keel despite the difficulties we face. But do you think the gloomy state of the economy, as you just mentioned, will have any impact on your agenda to end your infrastructure development, for example, the hydro? the rules and the rest of them? No, there's certain of those things that uh, have already been properly planned, you know, mm -hmm. properly the foundations for them are in, the financing for them, they were delayed because of Ebola by a year. Mm -hmm. So you can be assured that 2016 will be the year of uh, deliverables, mm -hmm. deliverables for postponed things that had already been concluded. Okay. Now, will we be able to do much more of the agenda we had planned, we may have to cut back temporarily on some of the things. We may have to be, you know, a bit more, uh, a bit more prudent in financial resources. And I don't want to see all the things we're going to be telling you, but we're going to take some strict measures too, to cut out the excess waste, to cut out, and there is some waste, you know, in, in government expenditure. So we're going to identify where those wastes are, we're going to cut them back going to concentrate on improving our productive capacity, trying to build our Liberian entrepreneurship to the place where they can move to a different level. Um, I'm confident that we're going to manage this. It may be tough a bit. It's always tough when you get into an economic downturn. 
but with good management and with the part of everybody. Let's face it, mm -hmm. whatever we do, whether it's maintaining peace, whether it's security, whether it's the economy, it depends on Liberians themselves, not just officials, not just government. But Liberians have to want to succeed. They have to want to progress. They have to want to be a part of the dynamics of change and progress, because if they're not, then we can't move it to its fullest potential. You know, sometimes when I, when I, when I, present, I, must, I must say, you, you seem to be very frank to the Liberian people in how you describe the reality of the situation. You call education a mess, and uh, you've given name to corruption several other ways. To me, that's a frank way of portraying how you see things. The way you talk about the economy and, of course, the future, sometimes you want to scare some people. You want to say, oh, the president said times will get difficult. How do you manage that? Why, why, why you keep, you know, saying the stark reality, the real things? Because as a mother and father, I, when my past starts saying this kind of thing, I would just say, oh, but then I'm, I'm done. Oh, but then you're missing all the things I just said. I'm a realist. If, if things are a certain way, it's no not to, you don't fool people. At the same time, you give people hope and you tell them, I know the situation is difficult, but I want you to know that we can take measures to correct it. We can fix it. We just need for you to believe in it and to participate in it. And so, you know, whether it's politics, whether it's uh, sociology, whether it's economics, I still think I'm an optimist. Huh? No, we can overcome. Yeah. We can overcome. I think so. We will take all the measures that are required to be able to do so, but I don't want to lie to anybody and tell you it's rosy, it's fine, you know, everything would be the same way it was yesterday or 2010 when we were in the boom period. I can't do that, but I can just say to you that we can manage it. We've managed it so far. We'll continue to manage it. And these things are cyclical. You know, iron ore price will come back. Okay. Rubber price will come back. You know, it was 2300 uh, uh, around about 2010 is 1,000 something today. We were helping the rubber sector through the Liberian Rubbers Association mm -hmm. and we're helping them to add value. So instead of shipping raw rubber or, or, or something, they, they now can do smoke sheets. Mm -hmm. That will add value, that will raise the revenue, that will raise our export earnings. So we're taking measures. I will talk more about that. Um, you know, when we report to the legislature. Higher education, they, we are putting out many students. Is the economy prepared to absorb them? Um, the government sector, mm -hmm. the public sector, may not be able to absorb all of those who have graduated, simply because we already have a huge wage bill. You know, close to 80% of public resources are going into administration, salaries, and wages. Um, but what we hope is that trained people will now have the means to help build that private sector, to build that Liberian entrepreneurship class. Mm -hmm. And I hope that those who are being trained will select the courses that will enable them to be, to improve upon their productive capacity so that they can help us to build that middle class which is lacking. You know, but it would take, uh, there, would be, there would be room for some absorption. And I say the economy will improve. And when it improve, that absorption capacity will, will expand. But at the same time, we hope that we're going to train a lot of people who will, who will be able, first of all, to replace some of the ones who have been the older vanguards mm -hmm. in the system, that the younger people can come and infuse the system and bring more capacity that some of them will go into the private sector and let us build, you know, this uh, Liberian entrepreneurship that we all talk about so much. Uh, the measures we will take, you know, to promote Liberian businesses, small and medium-sized businesses, those measures are now being looked at. Our local content law that is being looked at at the legislature today, as you know, 25% of all public resources for goods and services must be directed to Liberian entrepreneurs. And we're applying the same thing in some of the contracts that we have for those building our roads and how our structures. We want Liberians to take advantage of that. Those who are being graduated to look into that. Form small businesses, take advantage of that. You're talking about the Small Business Act. 
You're talking about a small business or with the Ministry yes. of Commerce. But do we have monetary mechanism to make sure that the 25 percent is really going back to Liberia? The public procurement and commission entity with uh, Mr. Dobo Jala has really come up with some measuring uh, means hmm. to be able to. First of all, they have to be registered with him, so he makes sure that they are Liberian businesses. And then he's got um, reporting forms. All of the ministries and agencies have to report every quarter, you know, which of their particular, which 25% of their budgetary allocation has been directed to specific Liberian businesses mm -hmm. that are registered with Commerce and registered with PPCC. So we hope that everybody will take advantage. We hope that it's going to move smoothly. But um, it's the first time. Let's make it work. Okay, we'll follow up on that. Macroeconomic stability, you know, except 2008, we've not gone at least a double digit. It's been really, really stable to some in a measure. And I, and I keep asking myself, how, what is the secret? How, how did you really manage through the heat of Ebola? You were still paying salaries and the economy was in some bad shape though, but macroeconomic stability was on course. What's the secret? Well, you got good information. In fact, you're right. 2008, we went up to 17% uh, inflation rate, and that scared us. Okay. Uh, after that, we said, no, 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 you know, we've got to make sure we watch this. Central Bank has been very careful uh, to watch this. First of all, whenever, whenever we see that um, the price indicators are of such, hmm. the exchange rate out of such, that uh, we'll be faced with, with inflation, then we cut back. Uh, cut back on, on government um, allocations to make sure that we maintain it. Um, we're very strict in, in, our, in our debt strategy to make sure that we don't build up, you know, we don't take on more than we can, be, than we can, can absorb mm -hmm. in the economy. So, Ministry of Finance and Central Bank working together uh, to ma maintain exchange rate stability have been able to keep the macroeconomic stable. Okay, then we have to come to the Madam President, you fought about some 13 to almost 26 months about debt wave of 5 billion debt was relief. But there seems to be serious, I want to call it noise about our debt portfolio now going to 700 million. Uh, do we have to take this money? Let me put it this way. We have a very, very good debt management strategy. It's not the level of debt so much as it is the terms and condition of that debt and the purpose to which the debt is put. Mm -hmm. If that debt is for productive means, thereby increasing the economic capacity and potential of the state, the end result of that debt brings in additional resources, boosts the economy. We are, we are we have an IMF program, so we're very conscious about the debt that we contract, that it meets the concessionary amount to make sure those debts are very long term. They go into building infrastructure that will enable us to add value, to expand the economy. So there's no reason to be worried about the debt we contract because we followed prudent policies in doing that and we put the money into places where everybody will see. Nobody will have to ask, this debt, where did it go? You will see it. You will see the road, you will see the bridge, you will see the factory, you will see the this, you will see that. And those then enable us to expand the economy, to be able to build the economy outside of central uh, Monrovia. We've got to be able to carry those roads and things so that we can cre increase the potential for employment, the potential for, in for in industry away from the capital city. So basically the debt go into infrastructure. Absolutely. The details are there. The details will be given to the legislature uh, so they know exactly what the debt is all about. And the debt has not, we, we have not reached any debt stressful level yet. Debt sustainability is one of our goals and we try to maintain that. So we can manage the 700 million? We can manage more. More than that. Yeah. All right, Madam President, if you really, really expose, you already said that, expose the the challenges and the weakness of our health sector. You got two more years. 
can you restore or improve the health sector within the, the next two years? We can improve. Mm. I'm not saying we're going to reach the limits of potential to say, I will say to you, in two years mm. we'll have a fully resilient, fully performing health sector. No. But the measures we have underway right now to ensure that all the county hospitals are rehabilitated and properly st uh, staffed, properly equipped, are something that will be done. Programs that will be training community workers so that they can be able to carry on like they were so uh, helpful and so instrumental in our fight against Ebola to make sure that they become first responders at the community level. That's something that we have programs with our partners that's being worked on. The Ministry of Health has a 10-year plan uh, to be able to improve. It's, it's, you know, it's staged, mm -hmm. uh, it's in phases, but those phases that will come in the next two years, we'll make sure that we get those phases done, and then we expect that um, it will be continued after. Politics, Mr. President, that's everybody's favorite. I don't know why, but our country is becoming too political. The conversation is about 2017. It started so soon. You agree? <laughs> I'm concentrating on Jack Kerry on my presidential duties right now. But well, my president, we're going to talk about 2017 a little bit, though. Okay, well, huh? you talk. Your vice president. Mm -hmm. uh, he's worked with you two terms, and of course, coming to the end of your term, he declared that he accepted a petition from the people of Lofa County. I know in some way you have shown or express your intent to support him. But I just have to ask the question one more time. Where do you stand with your party and, of course, the vice president? Look, let me be clear. Hmm. It's more than hinting. Hmm? Okay. Although there are many candidates who may, who may make good presidents, but I say I'm supporting the vice president because I know that he's the most prepared, he's the most experienced, He's the one that's going to ensure continuity, building upon the progress we already have. Now, that's my commitment. And I believe in him. I've worked with um, Vice President Borka long before I became president and he became vice president. Okay. You know, we're working in NGO sector, you know. And so, and there, I learned to trust him and to respect him. I still do. And I said, despite who the opposition, the candidates, with all what they may have and all their attributes and whatnot, I say he's the best person. And you're going to support him? Absolutely. And how far are you going to take that support on, President? Wait now, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll be in the trenches, in the slums, campaigning for him. Of course. Of course. As the law provides. Within the conference of the law. <laughs> What do you see as his biggest ability that, uh, you know, encourage or influence your desire to support him? His biggest? I, I didn't get that. What do you think is his biggest leadership ability? What can he bring to the table in your mind? Experience. And not just as vice president. Don't forget, he's, he's told his story before and it's a very impressive story. Someone who pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, you know, who worked in institutions, who taught, who served as consultants when he didn't have a job, who worked in the Ministry of Agriculture. And let me just say that I'm also biased because why? Yeah, because he worked with my husband. <laughs> my so husband you really in the Ministry him. of Agriculture. So I told you I know him. Okay, we'll see what 2017 brings. But, but my president, we we, we have to. And I, I, must, I must push this. You always say you, you feel great being a president of a resilient people. Do you feel that Liberia is better off than you met it? I know In so. In every dimension? By all measures, by empirical evidence, by statistical indicators, by any way you want to say Liberia is better off than we found it. And in two years, it will be even a little bit more better off. I assure you of that. Because some of the things that were delayed, we're going to make sure that they get done. What do you think you always say when you used to be on the air? 
<laughs> Life here safe. is better. Everywhere is getting better. Getting better. Right. <laughs> That's great. This no, is absolutely, it. Uh, Mama D. We, we've done a whole lot. Liberia is indeed uh, better off. Hmm. I'm not saying that we've reached the biggest potential. I'm not saying that now much, much more to be done. We'll continue to do more, and we hope that we'll pass it on even better than what it is today. Wonderful. Madam President, we are the writers of history. We'll see how that ends, and then uh, we thank you very much. Well, Madam President, let, let me move a, a little bit and talk about 2018 when you are turning over. I want you to give me a picture. How, what, what do you expect that day? How do you expect to be feeling that day when uh, you're saying goodbye to the presidency? You say, okay, I, okay, I'm done. This thing has been a headache for me. It's been a problem. Yeah, now I'm going. Give me a picture of that day. I will get into my car and drive myself. We are having done for a while. <laughs> That way you can go back to your farm. Yeah, I'll be able to drive myself to the farm. I'll be able to, to I'm not a late sleeper, but I will sleep late okay. just to make a point to myself. You know? I will not have a whole lot of people around me when I move. I'll have my privacy to do to walk and I suppose I won't go into a supermarket and buy something today if I go there. I got six people around me. And then and then all the shopkeepers just looking so I'll be able to do all those free things. I just, but you know, it's going to be nice. But, but listen, you know, by no means, by no means, and I'm going to hurt me. Hmm. By no means, I'm going to go hide myself somewhere. I'll be very active internationally. I expect that I will, there will be demand, you know, for my experience, for, uh, for my leadership hmm. around the world. And I expect to be working with other international groups to continue to promote development in Liberia, in Africa, and in the world. Is that an indication that what we've been hearing about your quest for the UN Secretary position is something that you're considering? For the next two years, I'm focused on being the best president Liberia will ever have. Then after the two Let years? Let me stay with that one. <laughs> after the two years? After the two years, we, <laughs> we look at what's up there. Okay. My brother, you have, you have a lot of young people as minister. We had a need to lie as a day. And then, of course, uh, Judy Moore, they are relatively young, you know, people of my age. Have they really been helping you? Have they brought something good to your administration? Tremendous capability, tremendous commitment, tremendous integrity on a part of many of these young people, some of the ones you've just named. Uh, they've done a whole lot to carry out our agenda. I respect them, I like them. I think they're going to be continue to be good leaders, and I'm just I'm just thankful that they've decided to be a part of the administration and to help us carry our development agenda. They're a great group of young Turks, as we call them, doing a great job. Okay, thank you. my brother. Let's talk a little bit about MCC the Challenge Corporation. I want to drive us to how how Liberia managed to attain that because for me it was very dangerous, very big, you know. How did you manage to attain it? What was the secret? Well, we worked very hard on all the indicators, making improvement. Um, and you know, despite the um, perception index that has rated Liberia so highly, by all the scientific indices, Liberia has done well in combating corruption. And MCC has a very rigid indicator that no matter if you pass all the other indicators, if you fail the corruption indicator, your entire program is in danger. We have passed it consistently year after year after year. And so in the light of all that, um, MCC uh, committee, MCC commission, mm -hmm in the U.S. decided that we had done enough in meeting all of this consistently for over five years hmm. and that we deserve to have the compact. And so, like I say, we owe it to all the young people, hmm. to the team that was working on this, uh, that have enabled us to consistently meet past all those indicators. Um, and so then that compact is going to enable us to carry out our infrastructure program, particularly in the energy sector. All right. 
This is the Prime Morning Drive. Our prime guest this morning is President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. We talk about three major issues, the economy, politics, and of course, the future. My name is Mama D. Already all the lines are ringing. Let me just announce the official line 0770501501. Ask the questions, relevant questions, and then let the President have an opportunity to respond to your concern. Let me take this first one. Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Please don't hold the line. 0770501501 is the number to call. Now, if you keep jamming the line this way, it's going to take a little bit of time for everybody to go through. Uh, Maurice Kroma, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for having me. Um, Madam President, um, thank you for giving a lot of information on the development program in Liberia. I just want to um, inform you about something that happened um, a few days ago on the holiday on Christmas Day. A friend of mine took her son to JFK to get treatment and she got informed that there was no doctor on shift and there was no nurse on the shift. She had to move her son from JFK to, to SOS clinic. And that to me was an alarm because this is something that also we experienced during the Ebola crisis. So I thought to bring that to your attention to see how we can address such a thing because JFK is our largest um, referral hospital in the country. Having such an experience is a negative thing that comes for the local Liberians that have to go and get treatment, you know? And so I just want to bring that to your attention. Thank you, Mamadi. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mamadi. Nice, yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Madam uh, President. Let's take three, then respond. Yeah, my name is Swana Masale, and I call you from the Oro. Masale, uh, go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity afforded me. Uh, Madam President, I want to ask this question, the issue of NOCA, even though Mamadi does not ask this question on it. Today, NOCA has gone, Ben Rob says he's fair to take the responsibility. I want to know how did you take the responsibility? Can you see a thing that of me, Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mamadi Dakite. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, Madam President. I'm Alfred D. Newman. I call you from Atari Resident. Uh, Madam President, let me first of all start by commending you for the level of achievement you have been able to carry out in this country. But my question to you, the last time when I heard you speak, you described corruption as a vampire. What did you mean that corruption was a vampire? Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, President. You want to respond to the three questions? Well, first of all, let uh, let me say that uh, I share the same concern of this person who took his child to JFK. Unfortunately, we may still have some irresponsible people that do not carry out uh, their oath of service, you know, in the health sector. Hmm. And so we need to do more mm -hmm. to change their attitude about service uh, uh, to the public. And so he's absolutely right. JFK needs to respond much better than the experience that uh, he had. Um, the the no cow situation, you know, as the president of the country, if any institution gets into trouble goes wrong. Mm -hmm. I say I take responsibility because I'm president. It doesn't mean I take direct responsibility. Okay. Uh, I was not a manager of no cal, so I could not take direct responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I think we allow the board, you know, and the senior managers to run it. Some of the fault of no cal was not totally their own. Some of it had to do with the petroleum sector, with the externalities uh, connected there too. Uh, but it, it is something that they could have been much more careful about and perhaps uh, through our own institutions and agencies mm -hmm. uh, might have guided them much better. So NoCal still has the potential uh, to, to rise again. Mm -hmm. They're in trouble today just like many of our other uh, mining companies are in trouble today. Our res Our charge is mm -hmm. to see how we can get them fixed and how we can either one or two things, close them down completely if they have no potential. That's an option. Or to try to, to re-energize them. Okay. Uh, corruption being a vampire, look, you know, I keep saying, when you say vampire, it just means corruption takes 
the, the lifeblood out of the economy. That's what we mean by that. And it's not just the it's not just in the public sector, you know. It's also in the private sector. It's in the NGO sector. It's in the civil society sector. You know that as well as I know that. So let's say that this is something we all have to work on because it affects us all. It doesn't matter who does it, from whichever area they come, it affects us. And so we should be concerned, yes, to expose it, and we agree with that, but to also recognize it and also set the personal example. So the people who talk do not set the example themselves, examples of integrity. So we all have to fight it. It's just, it's just so, it's, it's just something that ah, is a national problem that we must all try to resolve. Okay, more calls. Good morning. Hey. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, Madam President. Yeah, go ahead. I am Joe yeah. Asano, living in Montserrado. Madam President, even though I'm about to ask you, culture or something is not discussed, the other people will never let it do. Madam President said the prayer was made July 2013, up to date. They have not implemented as per the MOU. People have received money, they have refused to vacate as per the MOU. The Justice Minister gave an ultimatum last month, which expired on December 15, up to date. No information about it. Madam President, in a small visitor commission, we need to currently. So currently it's not in the game, but the land issue in Nepal can be resolved. After this, it's not resolved. After mm -hmm. the government started something nice and spent over 1.2 million to solve land crisis, it still lingers on. We need intervention, and I want to please make the commitment to all this morning about intervention. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, Mamadi. Good morning to Madam President. This is Achi Asano. According from District 16, you make mention of economic stability. Co economic. Hello? Sorry, sorry. One of. Good morning. Good morning. Please don't hold the line. 0770501501 is the number to call. This is the Prime Money Drive, and uh, we have our special guest, President Rowling Johnson. Said, good morning. Good morning, Mamandi, and good morning to our highly distinguished president. Uh, Mamandi, this is Maurice Moses Mongai, and I call from Monrovia. Go ahead, and Moses. Thank you. Uh, Mamandi, everyone knows in this country, since the ascendancy of Banasali to the presidency, there have been tremendous progress. Why did you, some of our act, I have to say we have Alexia, we, we are blind? But the prevailing realities are visibly seen. Madam President, all we want to tell you is to admonish you to keep on the good works. All what Jesus did, there was criticism against him. People said that he did not do good things. So for people to criticize you, I believe that it strengthens you, it makes you to be a better president, it puts you in a position to do better things for us as a people in the country. Long live Manasseri, long live the Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Good morning. Well, good morning. Yeah, go ahead, Kwadu Mohammed. Thank you uh, for the recognition. Uh, let me remain humble uh, in, in commending our president. Madam President, I want to respectfully say good morning to you. Actually, Madam President, words are inadequate to be expressed. But what you have demonstrated, even though many of your critics who think in their own negative quest that you are not doing anything, they are politically drawn. But for us, we remain vivid when it comes to the issue of democracy. Madam President, if and only if no one will love you for your effort thus far. But bringing your government closer to our doorstep is one of the significant attributes of your government. Again, Madam President, we, are no, we, we, we have gone through your profile and understood that indeed, Madam President, you have attracted international credibility. Today, your international credentials is incomparable to any other president that has led or ruled this country in history. Madam President, all are inadequate to, to be as well. Again, I'm humble and saluting you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your leadership space. Thank you. Okay, I guess you want to respond to the in three calls. Uh, there's, yeah, there's one. There's, there's, a, there's a question here about the uh, NIMBA. I believe they're talking about the Ganta land issue. Mm -hmm. huh. 
that issue really should have been resolved by now. It's just that we still have some people that are contentious, some people that have not accepted uh, the order, the decision that has been made by the court on a recommendation of the Musa Ability mm -hmm. Committee, which did a good job to be able to resolve those issues. I've asked the Minister of Justice to please take some action quickly. We know that uh, there are certain groups whose properties have been taken that you know are now losing patience. We ask them to please exercise a little more patience, give us chance that matter needs to be resolved. Uh, to the other two callers, I just say I want to thank you so much. You know, it sounds so good when, when you're so used to hearing all the criticism for a few people to just call you and say, Madam President, you're doing so well. Thank you so much. So let me just thank you. Yeah, you just made my day for me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, three more calls. Then, of course, the President will conclude 0770501501. This is the number to call. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you're live. Yeah, this is James Burahali. I'm going to put some live in your voice now. This is James Burahali calling from Bedley Hill, Hotel Africa. Go ahead. Uh, Madam President, thank you very much for all of the projects that are ongoing, like the Kanave Highway, the Makofi, Waso Hajo, all of the projects that are ongoing right now. But Madam President, we are hearing that after all of these projects are completed, by 2017, we are going to be uh, uh, resigning, giving change to Ambassador Buaka. To no, 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 not friend. resigning and giving change. That is the legacy we are hearing that the president wants to set, mm -hmm. which will be very much unique. So I want to know whether this is true. But you didn't listen to the program. She said she's going to be supporting. VP Buaka, and she will not resign. She already said she's going to end this term. Thank you, thank you, also, Madam President. Thank okay. you for that correction. Thank you, thank you very much, and of course, accepting the correction. Good morning, okay, Madam President. We have about some ten minutes to go. I always wanted to say this, and I have an opportunity. Which one of the opposition leader you really enjoy listening to? <laughs> oh, man. The man sick now. The one really the yellow head called the one from Rioji. Oh, not I <laughs> <laughs> yes, he used to be senator for <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like the ones who just give me a, a spirit a, a spirit of laughter. Okay. That, that lifts my spirit too. I don't listen to I don't listen to all the doomsday people. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mama D, and good morning, Madam President. My name is Vamian Kumar, and I call you for Panja Kadita. Go ahead. Uh, Madam President, two years ago, I remember you went to Kiawatidia, and you promised to give the students that is the graduates from the Jewish College in media employment of students that they are not being employed. I forgot what become of the of children in Banjo, and I'm present at the new intentions and you need to implore the KRTG to take care of the That is the teacher college. Thank you. You want to respond to that? Um, well, those teachers ought to be employed. Now, I can only say that perhaps the allocation that the Ministry of Education had, you know, to employ teachers were exhausted, so they have to wait. But let me check the Minister of Education. When we train people, mm -hmm. we train them to be employed. And so when they complete their training, we ought to employ them. And right now, we do need teachers. So I'm going to pass this, take this up with, uh, with Minister Joyce Werner to make sure that uh, he corrects that. Uh, the banjo often, okay, I remember going there perhaps sometime after Ebola to be able to respond to them. So if there's a need there, I would talk to the Minister of Gender, Child Child's, um, Protection and something, see if they can send someone out there. And I'll try to get them myself. We try to respond to things like this. So thank you for bringing it to my attention. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mama D. And a wonderful, exciting good morning to my president. This is always right. Now, let me just thank you very so much for all landing our many people. And I'm going to join you 
in what you said last week, in the Green Street when you do a lot of ongoing projects. We will continue to do a do nothing project. We will continue to dedicate do nothing project. And good thing that we will continue to see in the whole world know that that is, we are so proud of the achievement that we continue to make in this country. We can work in our community where our faces are past. We can work in our towns and villages where our faces are past. That in 2005, we did this with this, and it did continue to make us proud. In 2011, we did this another day, and it did continue to make us proud. Madam President, let me just say thank you to you and your family for sharing the greatness with us. When your mother looked in your face on the, at the family gathering and said to you, this child will be great. The greatness that the mother saw in you is the greatness that we as a country are benefiting from that Liberia, let me go for this, somebody. That Liberia equals to the high level funnel. One of the most significant awards that the achievement of the Liberia has made outside the world. To be that over the development of the, of, of, of the development agenda for the whole world, but I'm going to thank you for continuing to make it work for us. Thank you. Okay, that was very brave. Okay, my president, we come to the close of it. I uh, want to thank you for, for coming. Is there anything we didn't touch you would like to comment on? No, just to again appeal to all Liberians mm -hmm. to stand by their country, be proud of your country. It may not do all the things you want, it may not be all that you wish it to be but it is respected internationally, and only you can really carry forward, only you can sell your own country, and by doing so, it comes back to you, because the support that you will get will come from those who say you appreciate who you are, what you are, where you are, and I think we can build a really strong, united, democratic country in which everybody, feels a part, everybody contributes to. And so to all, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope the Happy New Year will be joyful, resulting, and for me, that is going to be deliverables of the things that have been delayed. 2016. Madam President, we are very grateful for the time and uh, we hope we'll have this opportunity again in the future to give you the platform to communicate and talk to your people. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mr. Diakite. It's okay. good to see you back and good to be here, good to exchange with our people. How the New Year? How are you going to spend the New Year? You know, New the Year, year so. no, 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 New Year, I always have, you know, open house. I stay home, Christmas I only farm, but New Year I stay home and, uh, and just enjoy friends, associates, partisans, you know, officials. So just a nice day at home. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Madam President. This is how we go on to this presentation of the Prime Money Drive. And uh, see you tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you. I'm still with the Yeah, 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 so you get hope on this is Gwyneth Shasha, the small woman. She used to be a very good, she's a newscaster. This is Salomon Nelson.
Due to the quality of art, art is what we only have that other much now. It is a Wimo guy, Joe. This is more boy from Zambas, actually. And they got in Galway. I took him from Vienna University. And they went from Rampart. I'll tell you about it. They were originally sports here. Okay, this is a sports man. Ben Gabbard. Yeah. So, for that's it. What? Yeah. 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 Great group. Yeah, Great group. Yeah, experience. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Prime 105.5 FM. Amazing. Amazing. Endless possibilities. Keep the dial fixed. Don't tune off. Lock 105.5 on your FM dial. Keep rolling with your tasty dial. The home of exceptional programming, great music, quality discourse, fresh and authentic news and information with awesome and talented presenters. Prime 105.5 FM, your tasty radio.